Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Sergio Cucinella, and I'm a software engineer of the Android team at Truecaller. Today, I'll talk about how to build application for the fast-growing markets. But before that, allow me to give you a brief introduction about Truecaller. It is a Swedish startup headquartered in Stockholm, and we have three main products. Truecaller is an application that allows you to discover in real time who is calling you, even if you don't have the number in your phone book. It blocks calls from the top spammers of your region, and it allows you to always have access to the right information, people, and businesses when you need them. True Dialer, it's a phone application. It enriches your call history with pictures and names when they are missing. And it also allows you to discover who you are going to call before performing the call itself, in case the number is not in your phone book. And finally, True Messenger, there is a messaging application that allows you to discover in real time who is sending you messages, and it automatically blocks and filters spam so that your inbox is always uh, safe and clean. But back to the topic. I'm going to give you a brief introduction about the emerging markets and then how to create great experiences for them. And finally, how the definition of free can be a little bit different in those places. So when companies and entrepreneurs want to launch new products, they usually think about uh, the West markets. So North America and the Western Europe. And those have a fairly big uh, amount of uh, potential users. In fact, at the end of 2014, uh, there were 163 million smartphone users in the United States and 197 million in the Western Europe. And this amount of user is uh, growing, but in a sort of moderate way. What we tend to underestimate is the potential that uh, all the other markets actually can have in our distribution. As we can see here, in China, at the end of 2014, there were 522 million uh, smartphone users. In India, 270 million. And uh, in the MENA region, 122 million. And we also need to remember uh, that uh, the next billion internet users is coming from those regions. So they are definitely going to uh, keep experiencing a, gr a huge growth in terms of, uh, of users. It is extremely easy to build great products with our brand new IN devices uh, that have almost uh, unlimited data plans uh, on very fast LTE networks. And we tend to forget sometimes uh, what's the norm in emerging markets. So when it comes to devices, they are usually dual SIM, uh, the screen are not very big, the resolutions are not very high, and even the new devices are uh, CPU and, and memory constraint, well, relatively constrained. And not everyone can afford new smartphones, of course. So there are many users that actually buy second-hand devices that are even more CPU, memory, and GPU constrained. And most likely, they are not running the latest version of Android, and uh, maybe they are not even going to get any update. When it comes to data, they usually have prepaid plans. Uh, they are not very cheap, so uh, they, the users use uh, the connectivity only when it's uh, extremely needed. And if we think that the smartphone, the smartphone might be the only entry point to internet, then it's obvious uh, that they really care about data usage. And finally, networks. Uh, they are slow, 3G is now a norm, uh, and they are congested. Even Wi-Fi is slow because it's based on uh, slow landline connect, uh, connections, and it's not always available. So how do we build great experience for those markets? Well, as I said, we cannot rely on an always-on internet connectivity. And this means that we need to enable the users to open and at least partially use the application when they are offline. This means that we have to build some sort of a caching layer. But as I said, the devices are memory constrained. So when we do that, we definitely need to keep in mind that the cache should be proportional to the amount of memory that is available on the device. It is a good idea to bundle uh, MDPI and LDPI resources. Maybe triple X HDPI are not fundamental for those markets. We definitely need to keep in mind uh, the image download size because that dominates the data usage of an application. So we should try to uh, download the thumbnail and the preview uh, images and to postpone as much as possible uh, the download of, uh, of a full-size image. And when we do that, we actually need to ensure that the full-size image is uh, displayable on the device, because it might be simply too big. 
And uh, of course, pre-scaling, it is cheaper to do it on the server side, so let's not do it on the, on the devices, especially when they are uh, CPU and GPU constrained. Uh, and on top of that, so since they are uh, not really powerful for the devices, we should definitely consider uh, the animation and the transition that really makes sense and are important for the product. Because in the end, it's better to provide uh, a simple but smooth uh, uh, interface rather than a pretty but laggy one. And finally, localization. We definitely should strive to provide a native experience. So invest in localization and in translations. And now the definition of free. If we look at these three applications, we can see that they are all freely downloadable on the Play Store. But what users from the, from the emerging markets also look at is the, it's the, the application size. So as an example, a user in India, by looking at this application, he would recognize that uh, downloading through Caller costs roughly two euro cents, while downloading LinkedIn costs uh, almost four times more that. And as I said, the users have uh, prepaid data plans, so the size is extremely important. So size matter, we should do anything possible for making sure that uh, the application size is as tiny as possible. Localizations are great for experience, but at the same time, they require some, some, quite some space. Uh, and this means that uh, we should bundle only the localization that are really critical for our business uh, and to, to make sure that all the unsupported uh, localization are removed because they might be bundled in libraries that we are using. Definitely also, uh, we should remove all the unused resources uh, there are some tools that can help us with that, uh, like uh, Shrink Resources and also Lint. We should take advantage of tinting and color filtering so that we can reuse icons. And we definitely need to optimize our images and maybe experiment with other uh, image formats. Use ProGuard for uh, compressing the, the application as much as possible. And finally, third-party libraries. They are great because they allow us not to reinvent the wheel every single time. But at the same time, they might, they might take some space. Uh, therefore, we should keep an eye on them. And also, uh, it's good to remember that uh, Google Play services uh, can be imported modularly, so we should definitely take advantage of that. I hope that this presentation gave you a general idea on how to optimize your uh, products for emerging markets, uh, and that if you are not already doing it, you will start considering it. Thank you very much.